Web developers often think it's hard to build AI applications without prior machine learning knowledge. But in this video, I'll be showing you how you can use a new tool called Watson XAI Flows Engine to build applications even when you have no machine learning experience. In this video, I'll cover how you can use Watson XAI Flows Engine to build your own AI applications using a CLI and an SDK. What we will be doing is we're going to build a question and answer app using a technique called RAG. So RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it's a technique where you use a vector database uh, that's filled with your own data to make an LLM context aware, so it will be better at answering your question. So let's assume you have documentation from your product and you want an LLM to be aware of your documentation and answer questions related to the documentation, RAG is what you should use. So in order to start building AI applications using what's an Explose engine, you need to sign up for an account. And a single account is going to give you access to models running in what's an XAI and a vector database running in what's an Excel data. From this dashboard, I'm able to log in. And after logging in using GitHub or IBM ID, a new instance will be created for me. As you can see, I already signed up using GitHub before. Otherwise, it will ask for permission to use your email address. In here, I can find a couple of entry points to places to get started, and I can also find my Flow Engine connection details. So these are the most important details on this page, as you need these to authenticate with the CLI. So I'm going to memorize these for later on. First, I'm going to go over to the documentation where you can find the installation instructions for the CLI, because we're going to be using the CLI to build the API layer for our AI app and then we'll use the same CLI to deploy it to the cloud. You can download the CLI from this page and then find the installation command right there. I've already done this in VS Code, so I'm gonna head over to my VS Code project. In VS Code, I can run the command wxflows login to authenticate with the CLI. I'm going to need my environment name and admin API key. You can find these in the dashboard. I've already done this, so I'm gonna run the what's an xflows uh, who am I command instead. So this should return my environment name and also uh, these blurred admin and API key. This means I'm authenticated and I'm ready to go. I'm going to clear my terminal again and then I also need to download the data set because I mentioned we're going to be using a technique called RAG, so Retrieval Augmented Generation. And with this technique we're going to upload data to a vector database uh, through what's an XAI flows engine and then we're going to retrieve the data based on the question that you asked to the LLM. So for this I need to download the what's an XAI documentation as that's the data set I'll be using for today. To download it I can download a zip file using curl and my zip file is right there. So this will download a zip file to my directory which I then need to unzip. After unzipping the file, I get a directory filled with HTML files. And these files also have HTML elements in there that I don't need. So I'm going to use the What's an Flows Engine CLI to strip away all this markup and then upload it to the vector database. For this, I'm going to run a new command, which is the wxflows init command. So this will be useful to initialize a new project and I'm going to add the interactive flag because I want the CLI to guide me through the process. It asked me a couple of questions such as, do you want to use RAG? Yes, we want. And we want to use a local data source. So I can do this one. Uh, so this is the directory I just unzipped. Then I need to select its markdown or HTML. I need to set the chunk size as well. So the chunk size is a tricky one because it really depends on your data set, what's the best possible chunk size. For now, I'm gonna go with the default, which is 500, uh, but I'm gonna promise you I'll be sharing more information on uh, better chunk sizes for your data later on. Not in this video, but in a separate video. So make sure to keep an eye out for our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna set the chunk size to the default, which is 500. The chunk overlap, which is the overlap in data with the previous and the next chunk, uh, also to the default, which is 50. And then the collection name, I'm going to change it to Watson X Docs, which is the same as the directory I unzipped. And then my endpoint name will be this one. And then finally, it creates a couple of files for me. 
So the first file it created is a TSV file. So this creates chunks. So this is all the data extracted from uh, this directory filled with HTML files. And this TSV file has chunks that I'm going to upload to a vector database later on, where they will become records in the vector database. If I'm going to look at my Tomo file, and this is really the most important file while building stuff with what's an XAI flows engine, it has my endpoint name. It has a section which includes all the answers I gave to CLI during uh, the init command, such as the collection name, the uh, data type, uh, the data directory, and the chunk sizes. You can also see I'm using a document store which is called Getting Started. So I'm not using my own vector database. Instead, I'm using a already provisioned shared Getting Started vector database uh, that's made available to you to explore with this product. Then the most important section of the Tomo file is this section called flows. So flows are actions you want to take against LLMs that you build using Flows Engine. There are a couple of pre-built flows, meaning that you can easily get a rag action to be set up in just seconds because I'm uncommenting this flow and then I can deploy it to the cloud. So the my rag flow consists of five steps. There is a first step where I'm going to uh, take all the parameters that are needed, such as the question or the temperature. And then there's a step called top and docs, where this flow is going to retrieve data from a vector database based on my question. Then it's going to put my question in a prompt together with the matches from the vector database. And then finally, it's going to send it over to the LLM. And the LLM is going to look at my relevant context, which is coming from the vector database, and my question, and then it's going to reason and give me an answer in the final step, step rack info. And as you can see, you can also pass parameters or variables uh, from one step to the other. So I am uncommenting this one, and then I should be good to go. After doing one final thing, I need to clone the environment file, and I'm going to rename it to .environment. And in here, I'm going to uncomment the line what's an X host because I can use my own what's an XCI instance, but I can also use a shared instance. So this is really good if you're just exploring and figuring out how to work with LLMs and how to set up things like RAG. So I'm going to save this because we need what's an XAI for embedding models, which is used to vectorize uh, all the chunks we have in this TSV file before we send it over to the vector database and also to retrieve them from the vector database. And of course, we need this to get access to LLMs. So with my Tomo file, with the uncommented my rag flow, and then my environment file, I am good to go and upload my collection. For this, I can run the wxflows collection deploy command. And based on the size of your data, it might take a couple of minutes to upload all the data. And as you can see, we're now done, and I've uploaded my data to the vector database. So the next command I'm going to run is wxflows deploy. So this will deploy uh, my flows to a live endpoint so I can query them afterwards. And it should only take a couple of seconds and then it's going to print my endpoint in the terminal. So this is my live endpoint that I'm able to send requests again. So you can look at this live endpoint as the API layer for your AI application. So in the next step, I'm going to show you a JavaScript application that consumes this endpoint. There are SDKs available for JavaScript and Python, so you can use either language if you're building your own AI app. So in this GitHub repo, and you can find the link to this GitHub repo in the description of this video, you can find the example code for our frontend app. There's two ways to run this. You can either run it in a browser by using a tool called StackBlitz, which is free to use, or you can run the application locally, for which you need to have NPM and Node installed on your machine. I'm going to run it in StackBlitz because it's a little bit better for this demo. And the only things I need is the endpoint name, so the thing that was just printed in my terminal, and then the API key for uh, what's an flows, which I can find in the dashboard. If I head over to StackBlitz, I can insert these and then I can start asking questions against my what's an X documentation data set. In StackBlitz, I need to set the environment variables. So I can clone this environment file and then add my endpoint name and the API key. You can see I've already done this. I'm not going to open the file because I don't want to share my credentials as these are private. 
On the right, you can see what the example app looks like. Um, and it also has a place to ask questions. So I can ask a question, what is WML? So WML is part of what's an XAI, so it should be present in the data set we uploaded to the vector database. If I run submit, it's gonna print the answer after a couple of seconds right here in my UI. And as you can see, WML is also called Watson Machine Learning, and it's part of Watson XAI. It provides a full range of tools for a team to build, train, and deploy machine learning models. So this data is coming from the document set that I uploaded to the vector database, and then the LLM looked at these documents and then gave me an answer based on those documents. If I go to this file, which is called, called wxflows.js, you can see I'm using the JavaScript SDK. I'm importing it from NPM after installing it. I'm providing it the connection details, so my uh, flows engine endpoint and also the API key. And I'm also gonna set my flow name. So this is the flow of my rack that I described earlier on. Uh, my collection, which is the collection I uploaded to the vector database. And uh, finally, this function is used to call the LLM uh, with all this information. And then you can see I'm extracting the information to display it right here in the browser. So that was it. That's how easy it is to build AI applications as a web developer without prior machine learning experience. Of course, if you do have machine learning experience or you've been building AI apps before, we would still like you to try out Watson XI Flows Engine. We're gonna be releasing new updates almost every week, so you can expect more features to be added to the product later on. If you have any feedback about what we're building, please use the comment section below this video or let us know via Discord. So you can find a link to our Discord channel in the video description. In there, you can also find a link to a GitHub repo, which will bring you to all the code examples that we saw today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and we hope to see you again next time.